graphs. This video will cover the topic, transforming the graph of a function by reflecting over an axis. On a coordinate plane, we can think of the x and y axes as barriers that separate negative and positive numbers. The y axis separates negative x values from positive x values. For every point along the y axis, the x value will be zero. For points to the right of the y axis, x values are positive, and points to the left of the y axis, x values are negative. The x axis separates negative y values from positive y values. For every point along the x axis, the y value will be zero. For points above the x axis, the y values will be positive, and for points below the x axis, the y values will be negative. When we have a function, every point on the function has an x and a y coordinate. We can reflect a graph over an axis by changing the sign of either the x or y coordinates. First, let's see what happens when we change the sign of the x coordinates. Say we're given the function y equals f of x. First, we can identify a couple of main points on the graph and make a table just to have an idea of the numbers we will be dealing with. Now we are asked to draw the graph y equals f of negative x. Since the negative sign is right next to the x in our new function, we have to multiply every x coordinate in every point of the original function by negative 1. Our y coordinates will stay the same, so we can draw our new graph from the new points. This looks like the same old graph, just flipped on the other side of the y-axis. Kind of like a mirrored image. It does seem as though the y-axis acts as a mirror. In fact, we call this a reflection over the y-axis. Can we reflect graphs over the x-axis too? We can. It's the same idea, but we'll change the sign of the y-coordinates instead of the sign of the x-coordinates. Say we're given the function y equals g of x. Once again, we can make a table of x and y coordinates of some of the main points. Now we're asked to draw the graph y equals negative g of x. This time, the negative sign is not next to the x, but in front of the entire function. This means that we have to multiply every y coordinate in every point of the original function by negative 1. In this case, our x coordinates will remain the same, so we can draw our new graph from the new points. And now this time, the x-axis acts like a mirror, right? Because the graph looks like the same as the old one, but reflected over the x-axis. That's right. Let's write these ideas down to help us remember for next time. Okay, so we can reflect the graph across the y-axis by changing the sign of all the x-coordinates, but keeping the y-coordinates the same. And we can reflect the graph across the x-axis by changing the sign of all the y-coordinates, but keeping the x-coordinates the same.